mean, because I don't think we can speak enough on the concept and process of getting <laughs> sync licensing. Um, so for you, was this totally based on personal relationships or did you actually research um, music mm -hmm. supervisors for particular production companies or shows? How did you even know who to, who to send that music to in order to get those sync licenses? Absolutely. Um, originally, I had kind of, like a lot of people, stumbled into it. Um, I, a long time ago, I released a song called Impossible, which is still my biggest streaming record to date. Um, and it, it got picked up by some music supervisors in L.A. at the time, just independently contract work. Um, they had offered me a, a sync fee um, to place it in a show. It didn't get placed, but they said that they would pitch it. They liked the song so much that they pitch it for other shows. Um, they ended, actually ended up hitting me up a couple months later um, and had offered a slot for Cloak and Dagger right before it had, it had opened up. Um, so we ended up doing that. Um, it got placed, which was awesome about a year after they had reached up, reached out. So like, you can kind of see how much time it can take sometimes for, for things to, to fall into place, but it was well worth the wait and we kept the, the relationship. So they had reached out, we got a placement. And then once we got the one, um, we kind of started doing the research and on like how to leverage that placement into other relationships. Right. So we started emailing out with just that record. Hey, we just recently got a placement on Cloak and Dagger. Um, we started looking up sync licensing companies. And then from there, it was us taking the reins on figuring out how to immerse ourselves into that industry. So at first I just stumbled into it. And then I've done a lot of work, you know, over the last couple of years of trying to put other people onto that industry because I see the potential um, in, in how it helps independent artists right you know figure out a way to, to sustain and to budget themselves and to fund themselves um without having to you know have 150,000 instagram followers right it's a it's a way for people to to make real sustainable livable salary as a as an independent artist um especially in the midwest region so i've done whatever i can to put people onto that and then from there it's been like leveraging those same relationships reaching out to other sync companies you know now we have i have five under my belt now so it's a little bit easier once you start building that resume on like reaching out to more companies and saying, hey, this is the work that I've done. Um, would you guys be interested in catalog? And then it's just being consistent. Um, so, yeah, I think it's there are sync companies out there too, guys like Marmoset that you can sign up for. You can actually add your catalog. Um, it's a submission process. Some of these places are private, but they hold like a huge catalog bandwidth of just like extra records um, from production that they've signed or vocalists that they've signed. Um so I think anything like Marmoset or like uh, Third Side Music or like using a Song Trader, things like that. You know, if you guys check out Song Trader on, on Google, it's an independent site where you can actually upload your own music. You can distribute it right through Song Trader and you can, uh, you can license it. So they'll put licensing opportunities up there. So maybe a good way for people who don't have those like, you know, professional relationships with private sync companies to start getting into the sync world and, and seeing kind of like how it moves and, and what happens and, and, and uh, how music supervisors work. So.